cowering in the fetal position in the back of my destroyed delivery truck, waiting to die a gruesome, horrible death isn't exactly the way I saw this day ending when I woke up this morning. Driving for hours on end can do strange things to your mind. My route was so remote it was tough to finish in eight hours. There was a garage that ordered car parts frequently that was three hours away from our home base. Just driving straight there and back, with no traffic issues usually took the entire shift. There were a few other garages that ordered occasionally on this route as well. You know how when you're really focused on listening to a song, or when you're thinking about something and really concentrating on it, everything else seems to disappear and you go into autopilot mode. You're still technically driving the truck, but only by reflex. The route was a two-lane road that passed right through a state forest and animals could be a problem. You had to be attentive when you drove, or you would end up with a deer as a hood ornament if you were lucky. I'd heard stories of drivers hitting bears, and that's something I had zero interest in experiencing firsthand. I suggested we mount a huge metal barrier on the front of the truck, like a cow catcher on old steam trains. My boss was less than amused. So you can see how going into autopilot mode would be quite undesirable and even dangerous. And yet here I was, driving through a forest, eyes unfocused, listening to music, barely conscious of my surroundings. Hours of driving on a solitary road will do that. I didn't remember the last time I saw a car, even going the other way. For all I knew the zombie apocalypse could have happened, and I'd have no clue. Even the trees wouldn't be so bad if there were different kinds to break up the monotonous scenery. But there wasn't. It was just pine trees. Miles and miles of pine trees in perfectly straight rows. So when something big and brown walked out in front of my truck, I didn't have the time or the presence of mind to slam on the brakes or swerve around it. I just hit it dead center causing catastrophic and instant failure. The airbag exploded in my face, smacking me in the forehead and making visibility a problem. I always wondered how a giant exploding marshmallow was supposed to help things in the middle of an accident. I was barely able to maneuver the truck to the side of the road. I didn't have to worry about turning it off. The engine sputtered twice and died. I sat there, hands shaking, barely breathing, waiting for my mind to slow down enough to tell me what to do. All it was doing at the moment was showing me replays of the crash over and over, like I really needed to see what I just experienced. Finally, I woke from my shock and stupor to a massive concave impression where the front of my truck used to be. I unbuckled and pushed the airbag aside before climbing out and walking to the front. It looked like some weird modern art. The bumper, grill, and hood were shoved back almost to the windshield. There was a large round space at the front where the radiator used to be. I got down on the ground and saw showers of liquid from several places. The antifreeze, oil, and gasoline merged together into one sickly sweet smell. I could see the river of my truck's precious fluids running to the side of the berm and into the grass. I continued around the side of the truck to finish my initial inspection. The damage was obviously catastrophic. There was no way this truck was going anywhere. I came back around to the driver's side and looked up and down the road. There was no traffic. I had been driving on this road for over two hours and don't remember seeing another car. Of course, in my music slash boredom induced coma, I could have missed it. But that was what got me here to begin with. Why the hell do they deliver this far anyway? I thought, knowing full well the answer was money. As I came around the side, I saw a spark from under the hood where it was buckled up enough for me to see underneath. Shit. I said, the battery. I dove into the cab and grabbed my phone, then ran as fast as I could away from the truck. When I was a good 50 yards or so, I slowed down and turned back waiting for the truck to erupt in a huge fireball, action movie style. I was relieved and disappointed at the same time when it didn't happen. I sat on the berm and waited. Ten minutes passed and nothing. I looked at my phone and thankfully it was undamaged. Unfortunately, I had no service. That really shouldn't have surprised me since I'd driven this route before and knew there was no service from the time I'd entered the forest until the time I left it, which would have been another hour if the truck was still barreling along at 55 miles an hour, 
Or at least that's how fast I tell the boss I drive. So it was decision time. Do I stay with the truck and the shelter it provides? Or do I start walking toward my destination, hoping to get picked up by a good-hearted stranger? That led to another question. How do you know a stranger is good-hearted just by looking at them? I read a story about this old grandma-looking lady who would move from small town to small town. She would become the most helpful neighbor anyone could ever want. Everyone who was interviewed after would say she was the perfect neighbor. Months after arriving and ingratiating herself, kids would start going missing. She was the picture of concern and would help with searches. She would bring casseroles to the grieving parents and always be there for them. Shortly after the kids went missing, the grandma lady did too. The police broke into her house after multiple neighbors called concerned because they hadn't seen her in a few days and were worried for her health. What they found was the remains of the missing children. She had done horrible things to them, then butchered them. There were packages upon packages of ground meat in her freezer. Each one was labeled with a name. They also found discarded meat packages in her trash and several casserole dishes stacked neatly on the counter. The police investigation showed that she was serving parents' casseroles with the bodies of their own kids inside. I couldn't imagine people could do such things. What's even worse is that once the accusation was out, there were neighbors who defended her. They said there was no way she could ever do something like that. That it must have been someone else that did those horrible things and grandma took the blame. That's how easily people get drawn in. I think some sick reporter even started the catchphrase. She gretled them. What's wrong with people? So, with that story rattling around in my head, I was thinking hitching a ride was out. If someone pulled over, I might ask them to call a tow truck for me when they got to town. But I doubt I would hop in some stranger's car. Not unless I had a can of pepper spray. Unfortunately, that was against company policy. It's funny how the company is okay with invading our privacy with their stupid cameras, but won't let us do anything to protect ourselves if we must. And then the thought struck. The camera. I ran to the truck and waved at the inside camera. Having no idea if anyone saw me or if the camera could even transmit through this cell dark zone. I found a napkin and wrote a message. Hit an animal. Truck damaged. Stranded. Send help. I wrote the road number and how many miles from town I thought I was. Then I hung the napkin on the wall beside the driver's seat. I sat there for a little while, waiting for I don't know what. I had no way of knowing if that camera was working or not. For all I know it went dark hours before I hit whatever it was I hit. That sparked a bit of curiosity in me. I never did see what it was I'd hit. All I know is it was big and brown. I got back out of the truck and went to the front. There were a few hairs stuck to the bumper and hood. I took pictures of them with my phone. Then I took pictures of the rest of the damage. As I was taking pictures of the bumper, I noticed there was a dark spot on the ground. I took a picture of it and zoomed up close. It was nowhere near the fluids that had leaked from the truck. I looked again and saw another spot near the edge of the grass heading toward the forest. Oh no, I thought. I've injured some animal and it's limping around through the forest in misery half dead. So now my options had just increased by one. Stay with the truck. Hitch a ride. If anyone ever passes, walk to town. Follow blood and check on the animal. None of them were ideal. Each of them had its pluses and minuses. I couldn't just flip a coin either. Unless I did some round robin type tournament for which one would win. As bored as I was that was a definite possibility. I looked up at the sky. The sun was shining brightly overhead with only a few stray clouds drifting by. Unfortunately, surrounded by tall pine trees on either side, there wasn't much sky to see. I paced for a half hour hoping for a passerby. Failing that, I started my round robin tournament of options. After a heated battle, Follow Blood won the championship. I wrote a note saying my truck broke down and gave the number of the company to call as well as my name and number. I stuck it to the outside of the truck window. I took a deep breath as I stared down at the blood on the side of the road. Then I stepped toward the forest and followed the trail of blood to the edge. I peered into the intimidating wall of trees. 
What at first looked like an impenetrable barrier now looked like a meadow. The trees were spaced evenly several feet apart and were easy to maneuver around. The ground was littered with a blanket of pine needles, smothering all but the hardiest of plants from growing through it. The air was still. The wind hadn't been blowing much out on the road. Under the canopy of trees, it seemed totally still, almost stale. Even the sun had a hard time penetrating through the green giants that stood stalwart for untold years. They were massive. The trunks were easily three feet wide, some of them even bigger. I marveled as I looked up at the tops a hundred feet in the air. For a moment I was so lost in awe that I almost forgot why I was there. I looked around and found the trail of blood. The blanket of pine needles made it easier, and I didn't have to dig through brush, losing the trail. I was surprised by how steady the drops were. It wasn't like the animal blood a lot at the point of impact, and then it tapered off. The bleeding had remained the same the entire time. It was almost like a trail of breadcrumbs leading me to this injured creature. I hadn't really thought about what I would do once I found it. I suppose that would have to wait until then. Deeper and deeper, it led me into this forest. The trail had begun to zigzag. It would go straight slightly to the left for a few dozen feet then lean toward the left for another dozen or so. I thought even though the trail zigged and zagged that it was still leading me basically straight away from the truck. For some reason that didn't bother me at the time. I suppose I was just in focus mode trying to discover how badly injured the animal was. To tell the truth I was surprised it was even able to walk as hard as I hit it. Hitting most animals going 55 would kill them instantly. Why that fact didn't worry me at the time I have no clue. I paused and looked around at the never-ending rows of trees. I noticed something ahead of me and took out my phone to take a picture. There was a tree maybe 50 feet away that had a strange bump on its trunk. None of the other trees had it, and it didn't seem to be a broken branch. The end was round with none of the sharp angles you'd expect from a break. I looked at the picture on my phone and zoomed up close. This bump had something else the other trees didn't have. Eyes. I slowly looked back up at the tree and the bump was gone. My blood froze in my veins. I looked at the picture again and saw the bump was around eight feet up on the tree. Whatever it was, it was big. As I looked again, the bump was back only this time. It was a few trees to the left and more disturbingly, a few trees closer. I decided I'd had enough of playing tracker and started back toward the truck. I tried with every ounce of fortitude in me not to run. I just turned and started walking straight back the way I'd come. My mind was screaming to get the hell out of there, but I knew that running begs pursuit. I knew deep down if I ran it would catch me. That still didn't keep me from glancing back over my shoulder as I walked as quickly as I could while trying to look like I wasn't walking quickly. I couldn't see the edge of the forest or the road, but I was sure I was walking in the right direction, even though what little sky I could see had turned gray. With no sun to see, I had zero direction to follow. The light was growing dim even though I knew it was only early afternoon. When I glanced back, I could see the head popping out from behind a tree. Every time I looked it was a little bit closer. I glanced down at the ground and realized I could no longer see the trail of blood. I stopped and hid behind a tree. My eyes darted left and right looking for the blood trail that would lead me back to the relative safety of the ruined truck. As I stood there, mind racing, trying to figure out what to do I heard a soft footstep approach the other side of the tree. I smelled the scent of wet animal and heard sniffing, then a soft growl. I dug my fingernails into the tree as a yellow river ran down the inside of my jeans. I stood as still as possible as the sniffing intensified. I could feel the wind and smell the stench of death from its breath. As it stepped to the front of the tree, I heard a low rumble. I wondered when its last meal had been knowing full well that I would be its next. My body shook from head to toe as the creature stood two feet in front of me and looked me up and down. All I could do was watch in horror as it picked the choicest cuts of meat it would devour first. I looked back at this thing. This monster whose name I would never utter even if by some miracle, I made it out of here alive. To say the name invited ridicule and the potential of an involuntary visit to places like 
Sunnyside Mental Institute, depending on how vehemently you defend your sighting. It was easily eight feet tall and covered in brown hair. Its eyes pierced into my soul, freezing me to the marrow. Its mouth was slightly open, and I could see the fangs inside. As my eyes went from top to bottom, I saw the claws at the end of its massive arms. When I got to its waist, I saw a dark spot that had congealed blood. I knew that was where I'd hit it. Seeing my eyes linger there, it let out a menacing growl. I knew my life was over. There was nothing I could do about it. It drew its massive arm back. I closed my eyes and waited for the inevitable. The sky exploded with light followed by a boom and rumble that sounded like a bomb had gone off. It looked to the sky, and when it looked back, I was gone. I gave up on subtlety and ran with all my might. I ran like a man possessed. Like I was running for my life, which I knew I was. I was running blind. I had no idea which way the road or the truck was when I heard an engine sound to my left. I zeroed in on it and ran in that direction as I heard the truck driving away. The sky was dark enough that I could barely see the trees in front of me to avoid running into them. Another flash cut across the sky and lit up my path for a moment. Then the thunder crashed just as loud as the last. The engine roared as it seemed to struggle, but I could hear it disappearing into the distance. I broke out of the trees so suddenly I nearly fell. I ran up to the road and my truck was gone. How could anyone have driven it away? Did they load it on a rollback and leave me for dead? As I stared at the road, I saw it in the distance. The truck was still there. I was behind it. I ran for it. As I got closer, I could see the back was open and the parts were gone. Someone must have taken them in their own truck and hurried away. I was more worried about staying alive now than some piece of human refuse who would take advantage of someone in need. I closed and latched the back of the truck as the rain pelted me. Then I ran around and jumped in the cab locking the door. I had just taken a breath when a creature stood at my driver's side window breathing hard and fogging it up. For an absurd moment, I felt like I was safe from it in the truck. That moment disappeared when it broke the glass and reached in for me. I dove into the space between the seats and climbed through the door that led into the cargo area. I slammed the door shut and backed as far away from it as possible. I could hear the cab being ripped to pieces as glass shattered and thumps resounded through the cargo area. And then it stopped. As much as the crashing terrified me, the silence was worse. At least when there's sound, even terrible sound, I knew where it was coming from. With silence, I had no idea. I sat curled up in the fetal position leaning against the corner of the truck hugging my knees and waiting. The rain pounded on the roof giving me a sense of ease and a sense of dread at the same time. The rain was something normal in my life that had been turned upside down ever since I had stepped into the woods. But it also muffled the movements of the creature that I was sure was lurking outside waiting for its chance to get me. My adrenaline crashed leaving me feeling worn out. My clothes were soaking wet from rain, sweat, and other bodily emissions. All I wanted to do was lay down and sleep. I felt the impact as much as I heard it. Then it happened again and again. The creature was pounding on the side of the truck. I could barely see because of the storm. The roof of the truck was fiberglass which allowed some light in, but with the storm, it was nearly dark outside, which meant it was nearly dark inside as well. Even still, I could see the wall of the truck bow inward with every impact. I wondered how long it would take the pounding before it collapsed, as I wondered at the cheery thought of my only shelter being destroyed by a crazed cryptid. The pounding stopped. Dreadful silence reigned once again, punctuated only by the rain. I didn't dare close my eyes, no matter how tired I was. The truck started rocking side to side. It rocked so hard that the wheels came off the ground on the driver's side. Then it rocked back, and the wheels came off the ground on the passenger side. It was trying to flip the truck and was about to succeed. I was getting thrown around like a rag doll. After a few times, it finally achieved its goal. The truck rolled over onto its side. I smashed my head against the ceiling as it crashed down onto the pavement. I slowly got up and felt my aching head. 
My hand came away red. I was bleeding, but I didn't know how bad. I got out my phone, that thankfully only had a cracked screen, and took a selfie. I looked at the picture and saw the gash on my forehead. For a moment I panicked, then ripped a piece of my shirt and made a makeshift headband to try to staunch the bleeding. Either the smell of blood or the triumph of having flipped the truck made the creature bash the truck even more. It attacked the roll-up door, then it went after the undercarriage. I was waiting for the fateful moment when it went after the roof which was easily the weakest part of the truck, but it never did. It got to the front of the truck and stopped. One look in that direction told me why. The door between the seats that led from the cab to the cargo area was open. It had slid off when the truck was rocking and smashed. I looked out straight into the eyes of the creature. I sat still, hoping it couldn't see me in the dark cargo area. Its eyes searched for a long moment, then disappeared. I breathed a sigh of relief until I heard it climbing up the side of the truck. My mind went into overdrive. I knew it had smashed the driver's side window, but wasn't sure about the passenger side. As I thought this, I heard the passenger's side window break. I knew it was climbing in to find me. I knew I was dead. I slid quietly over to the floor side of the cargo area, all the way to the back door. I knew it was darker than the roof side. I made sure my phone was in my pocket so no light would shine, and I curled up as small as I could. I had just gotten settled when I saw its head peek in through the door. Its eyes searched the back slowly, scanning back and forth. Just when I thought it was satisfied I wasn't here, it stopped. Its eyes stared straight at me. It started climbing through the door, but was struggling to fit in. It put one arm through then the other and squeezed in up to its hips. When it scraped the injured hip against the side, it roared in pain. I'd never heard anything that loud or terrifying. It was pushing through the pain to get to me when I saw flashing lights. I thought I was hallucinating when I noticed it had seen them too. It disappeared through the opening. I stayed where I was, in shock, hoping it wasn't pulling another trick or going around to the back to rip open the rolling door. The flashing lights continued and I felt the truck move as it climbed back up and into the cab again. Suddenly, there was a light shining in my face. Are you all right? I heard a voice say. I held up my hand to block the light and try to see who was talking. He turned the light on himself and I saw it was a state trooper. I tried to hold it back, but the tears flowed. I wasn't going to die, at least not today. He climbed back out and went around to open the roll-up door. Then he helped me out and checked my injuries. The rain had stopped so we stood outside as he asked me questions about what had happened. I didn't mind. I didn't even mind taking a breathalyzer test. But my eyes kept dirting back to the trees. He asked if there was anything I needed out of the truck, but there wasn't one thing I could think of. He took one more look at the front of the truck. So, you say you were going the speed limit? He said. I nodded. He shook his head as we got in the cruiser. I can't imagine what would do that much damage, he said. Did you see what it was? My mind replayed the last few hours of hell, and I remembered the name Sunnyside Mental Institute. No, I said. I didn't see a thing. I stared out the window into the woods while he prepared to leave and saw the creature. It was standing beside a tree just inside the tree line. Its fists were curled, and its fangs were bared. It glared at me with inhuman fury. For a moment, I thought it would charge the car and rip me to shreds. As the trooper started the car and pulled away, the creature stepped out of the woods and watched us go. As he faded into the distance, I looked into the rearview mirror, and it looked like a man standing beside the road. But I knew different. If you ever hit an animal in the middle of nowhere, don't pursue it. You never know when it might be pursuing you.